Hello class, this is section 7.3 and in this video we are going to solve the vibrating string equation. So this is what the equation looks like. The second derivative of time equals a constant squared times the Laplacian of u. So again we are going to set boundary conditions of zero on all four sides of a rectangle with length L and height H. And what the vibrating membrane equation does is tell us how a rectangular trampoline will behave given certain initial conditions. So these are our initial conditions. And just like the vibrating string equation, we are going to need two. We are going to need initial conditions for both u and the derivative of u because our equation involves a second derivative with respect to time. So given these initial conditions, we want to predict how the trampoline behaves. And remember that u x y t here tells us the height of the trampoline at time t at position x y. We have already done most of the start of this problem in a previous video, but I'm just going to recap parts of it that are useful. We start again by finding the product solutions of the form f x y g t. Now let us plug in u equals f g into our original equation, and we end up with uh, an ordinary differential equation and a simpler PDE. Now let's deal with the PDE first, and if you may recall, this is an eigenvalue problem. And we have already calculated this eigenvalue problem in the previous video. We got eigenvalues lambda mn, where lambda mn is equal to n pi over l squared plus n pi over h squared, where n and m both range from 1 to infinity. And we have eigenfunctions of the form sine n pi x over l sine m pi y over h. As for the ODE, this is an ODE that we have solved a few times before. And we get gt equals a cosine of lambda ct plus b sine of square root lambda ct. And since we know how to solve both 1 and 2, we know what the product solutions of u are. So remember, the product solutions are just fx times gt. So we can just take this fx term here and take this gt term. And that will be our product solution once we include some appropriate brackets over here. And now we want to figure out how to write down every possible solution. Oh, let me, sorry, before we do that. This is our product solution umn. So again, um, m and n ranging from 1 to infinity. And let's label the a's and b's as well. amn, bmn. Okay, in that case, solutions of the vibrating membrane equation can be written as a sum of these product solutions. And there you have it. You have this really nasty double sum because again, we are summing through both m and n. And just like in the vibrating string case and all the one dimensional PDEs that we had solved in the past, we are going to want to be able to calculate amn and bmn. Um, let me just remember that this is a uxyt. We have the initial conditions hxy and kxy. So let's try to use those. So we know that the initial condition for uxy at time 0 is hxy. And let's plug that in here in what we have. So we have uxy 0. So it turns out that cosine, when you plug in t equals 0, cosine becomes 1 and sine becomes 0. So we can just take the first part of this formula and just slip that in over here and change this cosine c0 thing to 1. Cosine of 0 is 1 after all. And sine of 0 is 0, so we can ignore the bn part. But we also know that uxy 0 equals to hxy. That is by definition. But we know that hxy has a double Fourier series. We did a whole study on that. So hxy is equal to this double Fourier series, sum m from 1 to infinity and 1 to infinity. Um, we're going to call this alpha mn sine n pi x over l sine m pi y over h. 
And we know that this is equal to what we had in the beginning. So let's just copy and paste that. And there you go. Now you may notice that the left and right side of this equation looks exactly the same, except one side has alphas and the other side has a's. So it stands to reason that a m n is actually equal to alpha m n. But we know what alpha m n is from the Fourier series, Fourier double series video we did just now. And we got 4 over h l integral from 0 to l and from 0 to h, h x y, sine m pi y over h dy times sine m pi x over l dx. So let's calculate b m n in the same way. And let's use another color this time. It's getting a bit oppressive here. So we need to differentiate this nasty equation first. And we have when we try to differentiate this respect to t. Oh, and the reason we are differentiating respect to t is that our initial condition here says that the first derivative of u respect to t equals kxy, and we're going to try to use that. We're going to differentiate respect to t. The sine term here and the sine term here remain the same, since they are functions of x and y, but the last term needs to be differentiated. So when we differentiate cosine, we get minus sine but also, the constants have to come out. So you have the root lambda mn is a constant, and the c is a constant. So these come out, lambda mn times c. And the same thing here, we have to differentiate the second term. The x and the y terms don't matter, don't change at all. The sine, when we differentiate it, changes to cosine. And by the product rule, we have to remove the uh, constant terms from inside this cosine function. We get root lambda mn times c. So again, well, we are going to try to plug in t equals 0 to use our initial condition for the first derivative of u. Oh, um, this should be a bm, of course, by mistake. And then we do that once more. The cosine term becomes 1, and the sine term becomes 0. So the first term just entirely disappears. This is 0, and we get copy and paste this, just the bn terms, and of course um, cosine of 0 is 1, so this gets cancelled out too, this is 1, and we have to be mindful of the root lambda m n times c term, so let's do that, let's move this here, so we have room for this root lambda n over c term, but again, the first derivative of uxy 0 is equal to kxy by our second initial condition. So let's call this kxy. And this is going to be equal to its Fourier sine double Fourier sine series. So again, m equals 1 to infinity, n equals 1 to infinity, times the sine n pi x over l sine n pi y over h times uh, beta mn the Fourier sine series of kxy, and we set this equal to our expression over here, copy and paste. We now have, once again, that the beta mn term has to be equal to the constant term here, because everything else is the same. And therefore, we have that b mn is equal to beta mn over root lambda mn times c. But we know what beta mn is, since we know um, that this is just the Fourier coefficients of kxy. So the numerator is going to be this 4 over lh inter double integral again. And for the denominator, well, a root lambda mn, if you may recall, um, lambda mn is just going to be n pi over l squared plus m pi over h squared, and then we want to multiply this by c. And there you have it, this is a formula for bmn, and we had a formula for amn, and we have been able to calculate the solution for the vibrating membrane equation right over here.